and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to have a first look at an amazing product. It's inside this Apple IIc, so let's take a quick peek. Since I heard about this product, I've been expecting it like a kid expects Christmas. And here it is. This is the new ROM XC from the ROM Exchange. This marvelous tiny device was designed by Dean Claxton and Jeff Mazur. It sounds like it's a replacement for the original ROM on the Apple IIc, but you know what? It is more than that. This tiny marble has tons of different functions. For starters, it's barely larger than the original ROM. One of the first things you notice is the battery. That means that it should have a clock, but let's not get ahead of ourselves and start from the beginning. Let's see how it's installed first. Installation couldn't be simpler. We just need to remove the original ROM and replace it with the new ROMX. I like to use a Swiss knife to do this, but of course, it's up to you. Although the ROMX is a very strong and sturdy device, you still need to be gentle and be careful when pushing it in and align correctly the pins. There you go, job well done. Let's test this baby. First thing you notice when you turn on the computer is that you get this instant menu. The first thing you notice is the name of the product, the version on the top, and a long list of ROMs. And look at that, that's today's date. The first thing you really notice is 15 slots with different ROM versions in it. I immediately recognize all the available ROM versions for the Apple IIc. I can see it includes the ROM for X, my favorite, and it's selected because I see an asterisk next to it. But I'm wondering what is this? Choplifter? Raster Blaster? This is weird. At the bottom of the screen I can see the different commands that you can use to select, set the image, upload, and different other functions. Let's select Choplifter and see what happens. Click X for exit. Wow! It loads Choplifter directly from the ROM. What about that? Click reset, the computer will reboot and look for a floppy. Let's go back by turning off and on the computer again. It starts up and if I don't touch any key, it will start up again Choplifter. Let's see what else it has. What about Raster Blaster? As you can see, this is happening without even booting. All this is coming from the ROM X directly. Let's try ROM 4. Oh, better yet, ROM 4X, so we can see the special menu. And there it is. This is amazing. I can't believe this. Another great feature of the ROM 4XC is that you can create your own images. He sent me a couple of samples to test uploading, so let's try that. The process couldn't be easier, and they have even a document on how to ROMify the files that you want to convert so they can load directly from ROM. You will see on the top right corner how the files have been processed. There it is. Converting a program to run on the ROMX can be simple. You just gotta be careful because the code must fit into the 12K of, of space that they have, but you can use some tricks like uh, cutting it in chunks so larger files can fit in different parts. It's all explained in their documentation. Now 
There it is. Let's test it. Hmm. That didn't work well. Let's try the other file. Let's run it. Wow. This boots into ProDOS and ProDOS Basic. Okay, let's see what other things we can do with it. There's one ROM in position D that it's a memory tester. Let's try that. Some of these ROMs don't have a real exit function. They will just keep on running and stay in that position, but it's easy to just turn it off and turn it on. One of the coolest features of this device is its ability to upgrade the firmware without the use of special software, hardware, or anything else. You can do it directly on the Apple IIc. My unit actually came with an older version of the firmware, so Jeff sent me an update and I'm gonna perform it right now. The procedure couldn't be simpler. It comes in a form of a file just like the other ROMs. So the only thing you have to do is upload it just like the other ROMs. Only you upload it in slot zero, that it's only for firmware. Here it is, file B, just select it. And for the slot, select slot zero. That's it, that's simple. It will tell you that it's about to upload the firmware and then you press U for uploading. And as always, it will show you that it's uploading in the top right area. You can see the two different versions over there. And when it finishes, you just reboot. Check it out, version 994. Let me do a quick check of the different ROMs just in case. I want to see that everything keeps working. Yep, so far so good. One of the coolest features is the integration of the non-slot clock. As you saw at the beginning, it comes with a battery, so it holds the clock data for a long time. To test the clock, I'm going to try to run copy to plus and see if it recognizes the time and date. And no, it doesn't do it. I need to install the driver. Do that real quick. I mean, real quick. I'm just gonna copy the clock system driver into the Prados disk. What? It didn't work? Damn you! Well, it seems like Alzheimer has taken his toll. I didn't remember that for Prodos, the clock driver has to load first, so I have to copy every file one by one, starting with the clock system file. While we wait, let me comment you about uh, the Romex so far. I am very, very impressed about this product. I thought that it was only a ROM replacement and you would be able to select a couple of ROM images and that's it. But this is a full-fledged product. It has a lot of features. The clock, the different uh, ROM files and the ability to do a lot more things. One of the things that I couldn't test because I didn't have it is the extra fonts um, device. You connect it to a side and it comes with 16 fonts, I think, uh, that you can change the fonts on your system. 
So that's one of the other things that I am very impressed and I'm looking forward for it. All right, people, this is the moment of truth. We will see if I did it right this time or I just barely suck. Oh, I saw something about the uh, driver. Let's see, the Romex system is up here. So, yeah, there it is, the date. Perfect, it works, yeah. Let's see at the device itself. It's a small size, it comes with a battery, and it comes with some connectors that will allow you to put some fonts over it. Uh, on the side, I think so, a different card. I'm not sure very well right now. Here is a reset plug that will allow you to do an emergency reset. And as you can see, it has great quality. It's very small, fits perfectly, and it's gonna be sold by Reactive Micro. They already have pre-orders on their website as we speak. Although this device is new, the ROM exchange is not new. They already have a product for the Apple II. So they have a lot of experience in this ROM business and making these kind of devices. What can I tell you? This device actually has surpassed my expectations. Really, I wanted to get it, but now I wanted more. I'm gonna get a few more because really it is the thing to have in an Apple IIc. It replaces several items and it gives you a lot more options. Personal note, this device has finally get me what I've been looking for since I came back to the hobby. The Senior Pro. One little hacking device that I had when I was young on my Apple IIc. My original Apple IIc and, and I haven't been able to find it anywhere. The introductory price is $99 and I think it's worth every penny because you get several devices. You don't only get ROM, the clock, a memory tester, program booter and of course a copy of the Senior Pro, something that you cannot get anywhere for the Apple IIc. Well, I hope you liked the quick review. Please don't forget to subscribe, comment, tell your friends, and of course, if you can, support me in Patreon. Um, see you next time, and happy hacking!